we ask that as we look into your word, oh, let your spirit teach us. Open our eyes to see. Open our ears to hear. Open our minds to perceive, to discern, to understand the revelation of your word that you revealed to us. Let us know Jesus better, even by reason of the revelation by your word. Holy Spirit, we ask that you quicken us. As we hear this word, let your word change our lives. Let your purpose, O oh God, for your word this morning be fulfilled in our lives and in the lives of all those who will hear this word, even after now. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I welcome you, brothers and sisters, once again to the Surefire Life Conference platform, this platform that the Almighty God has raised for us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus Christ is the way to eternal life. And he also declared in John chapter 10, verse 10, he said, the thief comes now, but to steal, to kill, to destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, John chapter 1 also says that in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. Jesus Christ, through him, we have received eternal life. So this whole month, we are looking at the topic, God, our helper, Jehovah Isa, El Isa. Our text is Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5b and 6, verses 5b and 6. And we will take that reading. It says, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. And what is your answer to that? Absolutely nothing. I'm going to take that again. And at the end, answer with me. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5b and 6. It says, for he, who is the he here? God Almighty, Jehovah is our helper. Himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? And what do you answer? Absolutely nothing. Man can do you nothing. Man can do me nothing. Man can do us nothing. Hallelujah. Glory be to our God. From these texts and the teaching we have taken so far, we can make a couple of uh, points. So just to summarize some key points. Number one, from this text, we see that God is our helper. God is our helper. His name is Jehovah Isa, the Lord my helper. You can personalize that. Number two, that God will never leave us nor forsake us. God will never leave you nor forsake you. So if you have given your life to Jesus Christ, washed in the blood of Jesus and born of the Spirit of God, know that God is with you. No matter what you are going through, God will help you. Psalm 121, verses 1 through 3. Do you remember the scripture that says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. I'm personalizing it there. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He that keeps you, he that keeps me, does not slumber. Behold, he that keeps Israel, neither slumber nor sleep. Our God neither shall neither slumber nor sleep. Praise the name of the Lord. And this our God is faithful. Anything God has said in his word, believe him. He is faithful. He is true and truth. He will do exactly what he has promised. So point number three from that text that we have read, you can see it says, I will not fear. So point number three, I will not fear is fear not. We are not to fear. The problem is that many people fear. Many people are afraid. Uh, because you don't see God physically. 
This has always been a common problem of man, believing God. Even the children of Israel, when they were moving out of Egypt, as God promised them that he would deliver them, they saw the mighty works that God did in the land of Egypt. He delivered them through signs and wonders. Yet, when they went into the wilderness, and Moses went to receive the commandment from God, during that period, they didn't see God yet, and they could not. Because they didn't see, they could not believe. And that's why Jesus Christ told Thomas, he said, blessed are those who believe, even though they don't see. Brothers and sisters, we are in the dispensation of faith. And it's so exciting, the dispensation that we are in. You are not to see, you are to believe. Hallelujah. If you can believe the word of God, you will have whatever God has said to you, whatever God has promised, because God is faithful. And so point three, fear not. Fear not what man may do. Fear not because God is with you and will not forsake you. I tell you confidently, fear not. God will not forsake you. This is the same promise God gave to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. And we can also look at verse 9. Verse 5 says, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. The same promise. And God kept that promise. He was with Joshua. Hallelujah. Verse 6, he said, Be strong and of good courage. For these people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. You can say the land which I promised to their fathers to give them. So it is the same promise God has promised you. It is the same promise God has promised me. So I want to tell you, if you can see it in the scriptures and you can believe it, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. So I speak to somebody again, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't be afraid. Your son shall not die. For Jesus, the Bible says, by his stripes, you are healed. I am healed. So fear not. Your God is with you. Fear has driven some people to seek for help in the wrong place. Fear has driven some people to seek for help in the wrong place, outside of God. Some have gone into idolatry, including those who are in the church, those who profess that they are Christians, those who say they are like Christ, those who say they are followers of Jesus Christ. Fear has driven many to idolatry. But this morning, God is reminding us, fear not. So that takes me to point number four of the teaching we have had so far. Point number four. And that is no idolatry. No idolatry. There must be no idolatry in your life as a child of God. And anyone who is seeking help from God. So we caption it this way and say, no idolatry if you want the help of God. You know, some people will say, ah, you have to help yourself. In fact, some people on the other side will say that um, it is only when the greater God supports them. That is when their small gods will work. So that they are doing the same thing, that they are agents of the greater God. <laughs> That is the lie from the pit of the, 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 of the pit of hell, orchestrated by the devil himself. You remember I read for us from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, if you start from verse 14 to read all the way to verse 22, it says, flee from idolatry. And verse 21 to 22 tells us clearly that the sacrifice that the heathen make, that they make it to demons. And so there is no association of the temple of God with demons.
So when somebody participates in idolatry, what does it mean? Let's make a couple of points on this one because this is very serious. Idolatry means you deliberately give yourself to demons and hence Satan. It implies that you have rejected God or creator. You have despised Jesus and his blood. Let me repeat that. Idolatry means that you have deliberately give yourself to demons and hence Satan and hence Satan. It implies you have made Satan your Lord and master and despised Jesus and his blood, which he shed for you and me and have rejected God, your creator. That is why idolatry, unlike any other sin, provokes God's jealousy and anger instead of hell. So let's take this one very seriously. As I told us uh, in the past teaching, I said, even if they put knife in your neck and say you will die, please accept to die and go to uh, be with your maker and rest peacefully in that eternal rest that God has ordained for you and me rather than accept to still see any moment in this world and enter into idolatry. In fact, the testimony of one of our pastors, a pastor friend that I know very well, oh, should be encouragement to somebody. He was kidnapped and in the den of the kidnappers, God showed himself mightily. God was giving him revelation so much so that he could mention the name of the lead kidnapper. He has put it down in a book. He could mention the name of the kingpin of the kidnapping camp. God gave him supernatural revelation of some of their secret things. And so clearly God established this was a man of God. At the end of the ordeal, the kidnapping, uh, they released him. As they were releasing him, they said before he goes, he should come to their shrine and swear. Oh, you really don't know what people go through. You see some people that were kidnapped come back and they are no more themselves. They come back and they don't want to talk. You don't know what they have gone through. The almighty God help and deliver all those that have been such victims. The Lord God almighty saved them. And even for those who have gone into kidnapping because of fear, because of lack, because of whatever may have driven them. We pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, God will deliver such people from those evil. God didn't create you to be evil. God didn't create you to, 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 to carry out the works of the devil. God created you to be his temple, his holy temple. God created all humankind to be uh, his children. So this morning, whatever negative force has driven you into such evil, the Almighty God deliver you in the name of Jesus. And so this pastor told them that, no, 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 that's the last thing. I cannot bow to your idol. Your idol is beneath me. I cannot. And they insisted. They took him to the entrance of the shrine. He said, you can kill me here, but to come and bow to your idol, to swear your anything in your shrine, I can never. Your idol is beneath me. I will not. When they saw his bonus, he said, I have paid you the ransom. Your, the ransom has been paid to you. God has revealed secrets to, to me, which I have spoken to you, to reveal, to show you the superior power of God. I cannot come to bow to your idol. In fact, even up to his uh, native doctor, God revealed to this man of God, this pastor, and he told the kidnapper, the kingpin, the name of his native doctor in the account, our God is glorious. And that's where we are going to in the study. So they, they told him, okay, go. And they sent him out in their usual way, and God led him home safely. And he is alive today, and he is still bubbling in faith today. Thank God for such man of God. That is what we are in here for. No idolatry, brothers and sisters, idolatry is very serious. Look at the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings, 
just to portray this uh, from chapter uh, Second Kings chapter one. We we'll look at verse one to four, and then we will just jump to sixteen and seventeen. It says, Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Now Isaiah fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. Verse 3. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and said to them, Is it because there is no god? in Israel, that you are going to inquire of Baal the god of Ekron. I want to speak to somebody here. If you're in church, if you're in Christ, whatever you do, if you hear my voice today, know that God Almighty created you, and he wants you to serve him, and Jesus Christ has died for you. Come out from that idolatry. Come out of that idolatry. Those things you are mixing, you're coming to church, praying to God, going to idols, Mixing them up, the time is up. I say the time is up. It came to a point where Elijah, Elijah said, how long shall we continue between these two opinions? How long shall we continue to play these games? If God is God, let us have God. If Baal is God, let us have Baal. But let's make a decision. So I read verse 4. So you know the time is up as you're hearing this message. He says, now therefore, God says the Lord, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah departed. And of course, if you're a Bible student, you know the story that followed. There were, this was reported to the king and the king began to send uh, his army and their captains after Elijah. And Elijah consumed, smoked them completely with fire from the Almighty God. Let's jump to verse 16. Verse 16. So then he said to him, Elijah was now face to face with the king. So Elijah now speaking. Then he said to him, God says the Lord, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal Zebub, the God of Ekron. Is it because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Did you hear that? To inquire of his word. Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah has spoken. Brethren, God doesn't want anybody to die. He wants us to repent. He wants us to come back to him. Your God, your father loves you. Your God, your father cares for you. Come to your maker. Come to your creator and leave idol worship. Idol worship, which is idolatry, provokes God's jealousy, as we said uh, 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 previously. You will see in Exodus chapter 5, if you read from verse 4 to 7. In fact, there, the Bible makes us to understand that when you are in idolatry, it means you are declaring hatred against God. You are actually saying to God, I hate you. And of course, the reason for that is not far-fetched because you're now making the arch enemy of God your master. You're making the devil your master. You're making the devil your Lord. So. You become, you make God your enemy. You say to God, I hate you. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, there the Bible says, you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. You shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is jealous is a jealous God. Our God is provoked to jealousy when a human being at all involves in idolatry. Talk less of the one who says, I am a Christian. I am like Christ. I am a child of God. So quickly, to go deeper, we want to then contrast between idolatry and the temple of God, which is the position you have to come to 
to understand the greater help of God, the greater help of God. Praise the name of the Lord. That is our focus. The greater help, or put it simple, the greatest help that God has given to mankind. So on the flip side of idolatry, God wants to greatly help us by making us his temple. God wants to greatly help us by making us his temple. This is the greatest help God has ordained for humankind in this dispensation. And what is that help? It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. He is our helper. Oh, the help of God is not far away. The help of God is with you, is in you, is in me. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. There you will see. The Bible says that God has made us his temple. God has made us his temple. Hallelujah. Let us read that scripture quickly. It says, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Can you hear that? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Isn't this glorious? To become the temple of God. To be the dwelling place of the Most High God. I love that song that says, I was born to be his dwelling place. A home for the presence of my God. That is what Jesus came to do. You know when he said, Break, destroy this temple, and after three days, in three days, within three days, I will build it. I will rebuild it. Oh, people thought it was the physical temple. They didn't understand that he was now talking about the temple that is indeed the temple of God. Your body, my body, building it, making it the house of God. God does not just dwell in heaven above only. God does not just dwell in uh, the heavens of heavens. God dwells in us by the person of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in us. That's why Jesus' name is Emmanuel, God with us. Glory be to God. So God has given us his Holy Spirit as our greatest helper. Unfortunately, not many people have learned this great blessing, this great help to be close to the Holy Spirit. And so people are running helter skelter. People are mixing God, mixing Christianity with every other thing because they don't understand God. And in uh, the greatest help God has given mankind in this dispensation. John the Baptist testified of Jesus Christ. He said he will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. And that was repeated in um, Acts chapter 1. You look at it from verse 8. Praise the name of the Lord. So in John chapter 14, verse six, verses 16 and 18, John chapter 14, verses 16 and 18, look at the promise of God. The Bible says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Hallelujah. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Look at verse 18. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Oh, thank you, Lord God Almighty. If we continue to read again, uh, verse 26, verse 26, he says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit is our helper in this dispensation, brothers and sisters. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
If you look at Acts, Acts chapter 2, you remember Acts chapter 2, that is where uh, the Bible confirms the promise of God that was prophesied by prophet Joel was fulfilled. And I dare tell us that since that day, the Holy Spirit is here with us. If you go to verse 39 of Acts chapter 2, there Peter said by the Holy Spirit, he said, the promise is to you and your children and as many as the Lord our God shall call. So the promise is to you, is for you, is for your children, is for everyone that shall come to believe in the Lord our God. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Oh, glory be to God. Let me use this opportunity then to make a few points. I challenged us earlier on that anointing oil is not the Holy Spirit. In the dispensation that we are in, the dispensation of the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom God has sent to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, we have become the temple of the Holy Spirit, the temple of God, the house of God. God dwells in us. It is that Holy Spirit that has been given to us that anoints us. So the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, you know it, and also that same scripture that was earlier written in um, Luke chapter 4, verse 18, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. With the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So how was Jesus anointed? By the Holy Spirit. How was the apostles anointed? By the Holy Spirit. There is no other anointing, brothers and sisters, except the anointing of the Holy Spirit, so that you may understand what I meant when I said that the error of anointing oil and all sorts of materials have made people who have taken advantage of that to deceive many people, selling anointing oil and all manner of things, and selling uh, idol uh, items for covering, for protection, for all manner of things. So we must come out of all this and stay pure. If you want to check, you would see how the apostles and consecrated and anointed those who were uh, being called into ministry. You can see that in Acts chapter 13. Let's read it very quickly so you can get understanding of what I'm talking about. I, I, I am not here to criticize anything or anybody. I'm here to spread the truth, to make simple the pathway to eternal life. So your life will not be based on the theories of men, but in the wisdom of God, just like Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, you read it all the way down. So Acts chapter 13, he says, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called uh, Nigar, Lucius of Cyrene, Manen, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Hear this. The Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Verse 3. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. They laid hands on them. I shared with us. You can look at Acts chapter 10, the household of Cornelius. There the Bible says in verse 44, Acts chapter 10, verse 44, while Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Anointing oil is not the Holy Spirit. And how do we 
Minister the Holy Spirit, you are just hearing the word of God as you're hearing now. Right now, wherever you are connected, as you hear this word, believe God and just ask him, give me your Holy Spirit. Tell him, I yield my body to you, God Almighty. Make me your holy temple. And while praying, lay your hands. The Holy Spirit is transferred. Oh, I pray, Father God, please restore your church. Let us begin to have the anointing service that we used to have in those, in those days. As a young, stu a young man growing up in the, in, in, in the University of Benin, I had an experience. We used to have anointing service, not with anointing oil. Anointing service we were practicing was exactly as is written here in Acts chapter 13. Young men will fast for 14 days, dry, no water, no food, because we were just young people. You know, the zeal of the youth, we carried on. On one occasion, it was my own experience. The minister that was invited, another young person, was ministering the Holy Spirit to us. And he laid hands on me and prayed for me. To receive the Holy Spirit. I left there. I didn't speak in tongue. But afterwards, the words were flowing through. That I could feel the words flowing through every part of my body. That was how, ter how strong the experience was. Something that you cannot be in doubt. Oh, if I was just speaking there, it could have been like you said, okay, you are trying to just please him. I couldn't because I didn't even understand that much then. I left the service. I was on my own. Then the word started rattling. It was as if it was flowing through my whole body. And I was speaking in tongues just on my own. Oh, God, restore us to that pure anointing service that the Holy Spirit will be imparted upon the people of God, will be imparted upon the church of God. I remember a man of God who talked, shared his own experience as well. He said, when a man, a man of God who was ministering laid hands on him, he said he passed out. He passed out. The power was so much. The Holy Spirit is not anointing oil. The Holy Spirit is is given by Jesus Christ. It's given by God Almighty to those who ask the Holy Spirit. By faith, believe him. Praise the name of the Lord. So very quickly, let's take key points. Our greatest helper, the Holy Spirit that God has given to us, who is with us. He helps us in various ways and he helps us in all ways. When you come to this consciousness that the Holy Spirit is with you, Know that you can get help in any way, in any matter. You just need to know how to cut the Holy Spirit, how to relate with him. This is the journey that you must undertake. This is the training and the development that you must undergo. We grow in the spirit. We grow in him and with him. Learning how to hear his voice, knowing how he speaks to us. When you come to that place, your life, the help you're looking for, you will see it in Jesus' name. So the Holy Spirit helps us in various ways and in all ways. Some quick example, the Holy Spirit helps us, number one, to, and gives in wisdom, knowledge, skills, and strategies. The Holy Spirit helps us in wisdom, knowledge, skills, and strategies. You can see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. Second, uh, First Corinthians chapter two, verses seven through twelve. In fact, I encourage every Christian must know this scripture and read it all the time for yourself. First Corinthians chapter two, from verse seven through twelve. I read it very quickly. Then we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before ages for our glory. Verse eight, which none of the rulers of this world which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has entered, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10. But who has revealed them to us through his spirit? For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. 
For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, one, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Things that have been freely given to us by God. Not this scripture, read it for yourself. The Holy Spirit has been given to you and me. We have been given the Holy Spirit to freely know the things of God. So the Holy Spirit helps us in wisdom, knowledge, skills, strategies. You can also see in Daniel chapter 5, verse 11, you know the story of Daniel. There are many scriptures that support this point. So I'm just taking just a few. Daniel 5, 11, there they say, they, 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 um, the advisors of the king, uh, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, at that time, he said to, they said of Daniel, they said, the spirit of the holy gods dwell in him. The spirit of the holy gods dwells in him. So all through ages, God has always deposited his spirit in vessels, in man, to help man. For man's effectiveness and to do the service of God. In the olden days, the Holy Spirit will visit and will leave. But in this dispensation through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit has come to dwell in us. Just like God prophesied through Joel, the prophet. He said, in the latter days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. It is your right as a humankind, to receive the Holy Spirit if you come to Jesus Christ. Receive him and get help now in the name of Jesus. Number two point. Oh, please also for that, uh, number one, note Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. There the Bible talks about the spirit of wisdom, of knowledge, of might, of understanding. Number two point. The Holy Spirit helps us by supernatural intervention. Supernatural intervention. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is great. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 28, you see there, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, said that he cast out devil by the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Let's read it quickly. He said, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus casts out demons by the Spirit of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1 to 11, there you hear uh, about the gift of the Holy Spirit, the supernatural manifestation of the Spirit of God. So uh, note that and study it uh, for yourself. I've already read Acts chapter 13, 1 to 4. The Holy Spirit spoke. Thank you, Jesus. Number three, the Holy Spirit helps us by giving us strength. Strength. You can do what ordinarily looks impossible by the strength of the Holy Spirit. Oh, a man to refer to in this uh, case is Samson. He was helped by the Holy Spirit. In verse 19 of that same uh, 14, he was helped by the Holy Spirit. In verses 5 and 6, he destroyed a lion with ordinary hand, by the help of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Spirit, the Holy Spirit came upon him, the Spirit of God came upon him, and he tore the lion as a man who tear is a young goat. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. In verse 16, I mean in chapter 16, verses 2 and 3, he carried the, the doorposts, people who, who thought they have locked him in, and they were going to kill him. When he came, he he carried the doorposts on his shoulder. He just took the gate away, supernaturally. The Holy Spirit can help you in any way, can give you strength. Philippians 4.13, Philippians 4.13 is a scripture every believer should know as well and meditate upon. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number four, number four, the Holy Spirit helps us in ministry and anointing. He anoints us for the ministry and he helps us in the ministry. Luke chapter 4, 18, I've already quoted it earlier on. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And I've talked about Acts chapter 1. I mean, Acts chapter 13, sorry, verses 1 to 4. Glory be to God. 
So, what do you do? You just open your heart and cry to him and say, Holy Spirit, help me. You have to develop a personal relationship with him, the Holy Spirit. Learn to hear his voice and obey his command. Obey his command. The disciples of Jesus, uh, the, the mother of Jesus told his disciples, he said, whatever he asks you to do, do. You must come to this place where whatever the Holy Spirit ministers to you to do, do. If he says what he is going to do, believe him. Then you will see the greatest help that God has given to mankind. is dwelling with you, is dwelling in you, and he is always for you. Praise the name of the Lord. So right now, I want you, I want us all, everyone, if you're connected to, just open up and pray. I speak over you that as it happened in the household of Cornelius, while Peter was yet speaking, the Holy Ghost fell on all the household of Cornelius. So the Holy Spirit of God feel you now as you pray that prayer. As you yield your body as the temple of the living God, the Almighty God Himself make you His temple. That no idol, no idolatry will be found in your life. From now on, receive the help of God through His Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we have prayed. And let us say, Bigger Amen.